gather this afternoon in a very simple ceremony of launching a pastoral letter for the AEC. The AEC, as some may know, is the Antilles Episcopal Conference. And it's an assembly of Catholic bishops referred to as a conference of bishops. In most cases around the world, such conferences are national in their makeup as the dioceses coming together to form the conference are from the, very, um, the same country or nation. However, in the Antilles Episcopal Conference, we are rather unique in the sense that there are a number of dioceses that form this conference, which is from the Antilles and even beyond the Antilles region geographically. So it takes in the Guyanas and Belize in Central America. But these dioceses are coming together not in one country, but they make up many countries. And so it's not really a national conference. Language spoken in the conference are Eng languages spoken in the conference are English, French, and Dutch, mainly those main languages, but we have many other languages from our original peoples and so on, um, in Suriname, in Guyana, and elsewhere. <clears throat> It is referred to as the Antilles because most of the territories included in the conference are from the Lesser Antilles. However, also included are in the conference are Guyana, Suriname, and French Guyana on the South American continent, together with Belize in Central America. The conference aims at uniting the bishops in prayerful discernment so that they can exercise together certain pastoral services for the benefit of the faithful in their territories. This is achieved through mutual sharing of views, experiences, and needs, especially through forms and purposes of the apostolate adopted to our different situations. From time to time, the bishops of our conference have issued a pastoral letter, which is one way that the bishops exercise their teaching office in giving instruction and guidance to the faithful. Today, this afternoon's exercise is to launch a pastoral letter on mission and evangelization. And I have the pleasure now of inviting the president of our conference, Bishop Gabriel Malzer of the Diocese of Roseau, Dominica, to share a few words with us. It is certainly my pleasure to introduce this this pastoral to the, the public. I am very happy that we have a few bishops with us to launch this important pastoral. As uh, our secretary indicated that, that from time to time the bishops issue pastoral letters so that we could exercise our um, pastoral office in the region. And so recently we introduced one, launched one, which was called the Pastoral on Communication, and this one on, the, on our task as um, evangelizers. And so, uh, as president of the conference, I am very, very pleased to launch this pastoral, and uh, it is my hope that it will enjoy tremendous circulation in our region, and our people will be able to benefit greatly from, from it, and also our priests, religious, and uh, bishops in general will be able to make uh, great use of the pastoral for the benefit of our people in the region. Thank you. Thank you, Bishop Malseer. Um, 
usually our pastoral letters are initiated by the various commissions that through which the conference operates. So there are various commissions, like Bishop Malzey mentioned, we launched last year uh, pastoral and communications that came out of the, the AEC's commission on communications. This document today, the pastoral and mission and evangelization, was spearheaded by the AEC's commission on doctrine and um, an important commission in our conference. It is my pleasure now to invite to the podium um, Archbishop Emeritus Joseph Harris, who led that commission on doctrine and who is the one that spearheaded the work on this pastoral. I give you Archbishop Harris. First of all, let me say how happy I am to be here at the launch of this pastoral letter on mission. But before I begin, let me apologize for my wear. You see, I am a retired bishop, and the retired bishops are allowed to be a little bit more <laughs> relaxed than the bishops who are still working in their diocese. So it's not for any lack of, lack of, of uh, respect. It's simply <laughs> taking advantage of what is mine now. <laughs> the, the pastoral letter a mandate for the kingdom, mission and evangelization in, in the Caribbean is extremely important for us because at times we tend to forget that the nature of the church is, is missionary. Our church is a missionary church. And that means we have to be out there bringing the gospel of Jesus Christ to all peoples, to those who have not yet heard it, to those who have heard it in distorted ways, to those who have heard it and forgotten. And so, this pastoral letter is an attempt to help us all to recognize our mission as members of the church and our duty as members of the church to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ in season and out of season. It is important to, rem to remember here the words of St. Francis. St. Francis reminded his followers that they, have, that they had to preach the gospel. But he said to them, but only use words if you must. Preaching the gospel then depends not only on what we say, but on our lifestyle, what we do. There was an old bishop in Latin America, Hel Camara. He was Archbishop of, of Recife. And he said to us once, be careful of the life that you lead, because your life is the only gospel that many people will ever read. And so this pastoral letter is not simply a letter which will tell us what to say. Much more it is a letter 
which will attempt to help us to live the gospel in authentic ways. To preach the gospel, one has to understand the context in which the gospel is being preached. 25 years ago, the bishops of the Antonis launched another pastoral letter in 1992, in which they attempted to identify some of the issues which affected us. Those issues still remain. They haven't changed. But other issues have come <laughs> on stream. And we have to know what these issues are if we are to find the, a method of preaching the gospel that makes sense in our age. When I was a young man in the 50s, in Trinidad and Tobago, the TV was just coming in. There were no things like computers and Facebook and all, all those things. And so the way of preaching the gospel then is totally different to the way in which we have to approach the society in which we live now. And so the, early on in this pastoral letter, the bishops attempt to discover the real concrete pastoral issues that exist. And because the nature of the church and the goal of the church is the building of harmony, we have to ensure that this cultural Caribbean reality in which we live, made up of so many different ethnicities, religions, ways of thinking, education, social levels, all of that has to come together so that we become a united society. And we are able, therefore, to give to the world a model that the world can follow. We, because of the various realities that exist, it is our task to show the world that it is possible for peoples of different ethnicities, different religions, different ways of thinking, that it is possible for them to live in peace and harmony. And so, following on what St. Francis says, preach, but only speak if you must, we have to bring through evangelization our people to the point in which they live the harmony which the gospel calls us to. We cannot be faithful to the mission unless we are able to look at this reality that is the Caribbean, get away from the vision which is too nationalistic and come to an alternative vision in which we are able to be united so that we can show the world that yes, 
it is possible to live the gospel message of love, of love as Christ loved, to think of the other before we think of ourselves, and build a society of justice, peace, and love. And so there are certain things which it's important for us to, uh, to take seriously. And the first thing we have to take seriously is the word of God. God's word tells us, calls us to a way of life. And our people have to know God's word and let that word go deep within them and let that word call them to change of life so that the word of God has to animate all of our lives. The second thing which is extremely important is the Eucharist and liturgy. We are a Eucharistic people. And Eucharist is source and foundation and sign of unity. If we want to be a people living in harmony, we have to live <coughs> We have to live, not only in church, but every day of our life, in all of our activities, what Eucharist means. I tell people very often when I'm preaching that Eucharist is the only place that I know where people of different ethnicities, different social classes, different uh, financial status come together and eat at the same table. We do that in church. We have to get our people to do that outside of church also. And therefore, our liturgies and the symbols that we use have to say something without our explaining it. If we have to explain symbols, the symbols are dead. We have to be able to develop our own symbols that express what Eucharist means. Then, of course, we have to remember that the, the cell, the basic cell of society is the family. And therefore, it is extremely important that our families be evangelized. Our families have to be schools of Christian living. In the canon of the church, marriage is described as a partnership of every aspect of life, entered into for the good of the spouses and for the procreation and education of children. That education is not about doctorates and masters. That education is about the word of God. That education is about learning what discipleship means. That education is about living what the gospel demands of us. And therefore, it is important that work be done with our families 
so that our families take on the role that they have as schools of Christian living. Unless our families are schools of Christian living, our society is not going to be the type of society that Almighty God would like it to be. And so it is our hope that this pastoral letter will find its way into the hands of parents, catechists, teachers, deacons, Eucharistic ministers, religious, and priests of God. And that all of us really study it and try to put into practice what the pastoral letter asks of us. If we can do that, then I don't say it tomorrow or the following day, but certainly in a few years' time, we will have a different society here in the Caribbean. Thank you. Thank you, Archbishop. Um, and, and I, on behalf of Archbishop Harris um, and the Commission on Doctrine for the AEC, I'd like to thank too publicly all those theologians who collaborated with the Commission in working on this document, as well as those who helped with the editing and getting it ready for publication. For a document of this nature, a pastoral letter to be issued by the Conference of Bishops, all the bishops of the conference must give their approval. And again, I thank all the bishops of our conference for that giving of that approval so that we could now publish this, this work. I will close our, our time here this afternoon by reading for you the conclusion of the pastoral letter. The unity of the church is the single most powerful evangelizing tool in that it draws from the Trinitarian dimension of the church's understanding. It is faithful to the most basic but most profound value which characterizes the church's Catholicity, that is, it is found everywhere but is united. Wherever we go in the world, the Catholic Church is the same. As the saying goes, unity is strength. Therefore, our sharing in God's anointing for the sake of the church's mission has of necessity to promote the unity of the body of Christ. It stands to reason, therefore, that whatever is done in the name of the church founded by Christ must be geared towards the building of the kingdom since the entire mission of the church is directed towards that end. And that was taken from Bishop Malzay's book, on, and I think it was a publication of homilies given by him in 2012. As we work towards building God's kingdom, we are aware that Mary, the mother of evangelization, continues to intercede for the Caribbean church, inspired by our Blessed Mother's faith, which continues to fuel perseverance, we press forward with hope amid the many challenges that beset us on our earthly pilgrimage. As Pope Francis says, we implore her maternal intercession that the church may become a home for many peoples, a mother for all peoples, and that the way may be open to the birth of a new world. It is the risen Christ who tells us with a power that fills us with confidence and unshakable hope. Behold, I make all things new. Revelation 21 verse 5. And that's a quote from Pope Francis in Evangelii Gaudium number 288. 
We, therefore, we meaning the bishops of our conference, therefore exhort all clergy, religious sisters and brothers, and the laity to be mission conscious and to develop mission conscious activities. Let us be purposeful, proactive, and progressive in nurturing the seed of God's word in the Caribbean soil. In keeping with our baptismal identity to be missionary disciples, let us resolutely commit ourselves to the evangelical mission of Jesus Christ in the Caribbean today. Happy reading of the pastoral, and as Archbishop Emeritus Joseph Harris called us to, let us truly use this document to, to help us to be better um, proclaimers of God's word. God bless you and thank you for this, for coming here this evening.